Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about the another concept that is nothing but the resources in the web. So, what is this resources in the web? Let's try to see it. Resources in the web means nothing but what I can say is any file, photo, video, or anything is called as a resource only. That means any physical activity, any physical item, we can call it as a resource. Let's try to see. The target of an HTTP request. So now we have learned the basics of the HTTP, what is an HTTP and all those things we have learned it. Now you need to understand that why we need to use this HTTP. So what is the target? So that means by using HTTP, what we can do? So by using HTTP request, so the target, the target means nothing but, so by using HTTP request, what it will give you is the resource. The target of an HTTP request is nothing but, a, is called as a resource. That means the written type. So the, if you're trying, if you are trying to make a HTTP request to a particular thing means, you are expecting a resource whose nature isn't defined for that. So that means we, we don't know about that one. So that resource can be either a document, a photo or anything else. So it's a physical item. So it can be a document, a photo or anything, anything else. It can be a file or anything. <clears throat> so that is the thing I am trying to tell you. So HTTP request when you are trying to make means you are expecting a resource. That resource, meaning of that resource is nothing but it can be a document, a photo, a video, audio, anything else. Each resource is identified by a uniform resource identifier. Now you need to understand that each resource, whether it could be a photo, whether it could be a file, document or anything. So it is identified by a uniform resource identifier. So that means that each row resource has an identifier. So the name, how we, the people will be having a name to identify ourselves. The same scenario, each resource has a uniform resource identifier. So now the name of that, uh, the name, so now we are having, uh, the as a human beings, we are having a name. So now as a resource, it will be having a uniform resource identifier. And how the structure of this uniform resource identifier, let's try to see. The most form, common form of URI is the uniform resource locator. So we can also say it as uniform resource locator. Nothing but in the common words, you used to say it as URL, which is known as the web address. Can also we will also say it as a web address. Now you need to understand that web address means nothing but a URL, uniform resource identifier. It is nothing but whenever you are trying to access a document, a file, or anything, it will be given. It will be given a unique identifier. That identifier name is nothing but a uniform resource identifier. This is the thing you need to understand. So the uniform resource identifier will be in a such a way that we have seen here http colon slash www.example.com or otherwise http colon double slash www.example.com slash doc slash learn so this is how the uniform resource locator the url will be looking at look like now let's try to see each part one by one so let's try to understand each part one by one first one is nothing but an http http this is called as a protocol First, first one. So here you will be able to see HTTP colon double slash, right? This one, first one is called as a protocol. So this is nothing but what we are trying to learn. So the, how we are trying to make the request. Nothing but an HTTP. HTTP is the protocol. It indicates which protocol the browser must use. Which protocol the browser must use. Usually it is the HTTP protocol. Or sometimes it can be a secured version with an S at the end, HTTPS. So HTTP with a secured version. The web requires one of these two, so any of these two, the web for accessing the document or resources in the web, it requires the protocol that is nothing but either it could be an HTTP or the HTTPS, but browsers also know how to handle other protocols also, such as mail to FTP to handle a file request to open a mail client. So don't be surprised if you see such protocols. Okay. So the web address, the browser. In order to access the resource and identify anything, it, it uses the HTTP protocol. But there are also other protocols which the browser can understand. Mail to FTP, some are there, which are not relevant to this series. But you need to remember. Now the next part comes is the www.example.com. So this is the next one. Normally it, we will be calling this one as a domain name. So this is the name you need to understand. It is called as a domain name or the domain simply we can say example.com is the domain name or authority that governs the namespace 
so we can say it as the domain name or the so we will be assigning this uh domain by a, by a third party authority so that govern uh, they governs that one it indicates which web server is being requested to so this is an identifier to the we can say that which web server we are accessing the we are we are trying to request the resource alternatively it is possible to directly use an ip address also alternatively instead of using this domain name we can also use the ip address but because it is less convenient it is not often used in the web for each domain name you will be having an ip address if you want you can directly access with ip address or otherwise you will be having some uh, catchy name something like domain name which we can easily remember and also it will be convenient for us whereas typing the ip address something like 192 point something like dot something like that if you are trying to use it it is less convenient and it can confuse we can get confused because of this reason we can use this domain name and the next one colon 80 so normally if you are trying to do angular or react apps if you are trying to build it you will be able to see this port name colon 80 it is a port 80 is the port in this instance it indicates the technical gate so it is called as a technical gate so through which gate i uh, so now we understood the protocol what is the protocol i need to follow and we understood that www.example.com that is nothing but uh, the web server which i want to request so we understood that we got the web server also now we got the web server so how i need to enter the web enter, enter into the web server so through which gate i need to enter the web server so that is nothing but the port name so we are telling the 80 port it is technically technical gate used to access the resource on the web server now we got we, we know that we got the protocol and we got the web, web server and we need to access the resource through which gate i need to access the resource this gives you the port name it is usually omitted if the web server uses the standard port of the http protocol normally by default http has a default protocol that is nothing but uh, default port 80 https it will have 443 if you don't mention if you don't mention the port the it will try the sub browser will try to access in the 80 port or otherwise if you mention as a separate port means it will access it will access the port so if it is the default port 80 means there is no need to mention the 80 so you can directly write the domain name automatically the web uh, the browser will will uh, go to the 80 port or otherwise if there is a uh, other than 80 port means mandatorily you need to mention the port name also the next one is the path to the file now we entered into the website web address so where we can find the resource so this is the path where we can find the resource path to my file path to my file is the path to the resource on the web server now we entered into the web server through the gate now it is the path through of the web server now we need to know where it is located in the web server so here it is the path to this resource on the web server in the early days of the web a path like this represented a physical file location on the web server normally in the early days in the in the old days when we are trying to do so directly if you try to understand that path we can able to understand the physical location where it is located like but nowadays it is mostly an abstraction handled by the web servers without any physical reality now nowadays we are having without any dot extension and all those things something like we need to have a SEO friendly urls like that so now if you try to see that url also we cannot estimate the file path where it is located in the web server it is an abstraction something now the second one is the last one is the key is equal to value one key two is equal to value two so these are the query parameters normally we used to call this one as a query parameters these are extra parameters provided to the web server so these are the extra parameters these are called as a query parameters it is provided to the web server those parameters are a list of key value pairs separated with the ampersand symbol so these parameters are a list of key value pairs separated by ampersand symbol the web server can use those parameters to do extra stuff before returning the resource to the user so if you want to do some extra manipulation for the resource so by using these key value pairs query parameters the web server will do the manipulation to the resource before returning it to the user so that is a, that is what i want to explain to you each way so you can ask me that so question mark key is equal to one key to cam percent like that is this the rule like this only i need to use means so there is no uh rules for that one each web server has its own rules regarding the parameters thing 
So the reliable way to know how a specific web server is handling means so you should ask the web server owner. So normally we will be using like that. So there are no particular rules and regulations. We should use it like this question mark ampersand like that only. We need to use like that. So there is no rules in that one. So how the web server takes it. So we need to ask the website web server owner so that like that only we can send. And the last one is nothing but hash hash somewhere in the document. Just I gave the name. So it, uh, any name we can keep it. So this is called as an anchor or the fragment also. We used to call it as a fragment also. So this is this is why when we'll be using it is an anchor to the another part of the resource itself. So that means in the resource itself, you have if you want to anchor something means we'll be using this one. An anchor represents a sort of bookmark inside the resource, giving the browser the directions to show the content located at the bookmarked spot. On HTML document, for example, the browser will scroll to the point where the anchor is defined. On a video or an audio document, the browser will try to go to the time the anchor represents. It is worth noting that, that the part after the hash is also known as the fragment identifier. It is never sent to the server with the request. So this after the hash, whatever the hash we are having after the hash, it is, it is, it is not sent to the server. So this is something like used in the client side only. Whatever the data present after the hash is used on the client side JavaScript or anything only, we'll be using that one. So to move into the to move across the document directly to the particular location. So if you want to use it, so we'll be using this hashtag. So these are all about the different types of uh, URL uh, structure we'll be having. So these are all the things you need to understand it. So first one is the protocol, second one is the domain name and the port name. Afterwards, path to the file, query parameters, and last one is the fragment. So these are the different parts which are present in the URL. Hope you understood about this URL structure. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.